Wow. I mean, like, legitimately, wow. Is this the end of the gravy train for the MCU? This is now, The Eternals is now the worst rated Marvel movie in history. In history. I have a lot of thoughts about this. Now, I did have a couple of viewers who were irritated by me saying that, you know, nobody knows who the Eternals are and that, um, you know, they, they're not, you know, 100 years old. They like the Jack Kirby comics. I, I, you know, I meant that like from a, you know, I don't want you to, I want people to remember that even though I enjoy dunking on Marvel and uh, Disney, for example, if you like the movies, like, forget me. You know what I mean? Like, life is short. Enjoy what you want to enjoy. Don't watch somebody on YouTube and don't let them make you feel bad for not liking something. There's a lot of hyperbole and stuff. You know, I'm an entertainer first and foremost. Obviously, The Eternals probably isn't the worst movie in history, but it is the worst MCU movie in history. And this score continues to go down. It was at 66 like 20 minutes ago, and I refreshed, and now it's down to 65, which, by the way, is hilariously odd that it would say that that's certified fresh or that it's fresh at a 65. Um, but yeah, I just, I, you know, I, I wanted to mention that. Like, hey, if you like something, I don't ever want you to feel guilty about it. You know, there are a lot of my viewers that enjoyed The Last of Us 2. And that was kind of when I started realizing that I needed to be a little more careful. Like, I don't want to ruin things for people. I just want to have a bit of fun. The Eternals may be a totally fine movie. I mean, certainly critics are almost never right. But my point was not that, not that necessarily it got a bad review and the critics are the gold star, gold standard. It's that they clearly pandered to critics with an uber diverse cast and the the two dads with their their kid and they still hated it i i think that's the that was the real you know the my main point takeaway we see the movies now to a 65 percent with 84 reviews there's been a few new reviews that have dropped in cassie DeCosta, costa vanity fair saying from visuals to music choice there's a lack of style here that's only further emphasized by the film's refusal to focus. I think what's happened to Marvel, in particular with the Eternals, is they had just so many W's in a row that they were probably feeling invincible. Um, there will definitely not be another Eternals movie. I can I can be very certain about that. This movie is not going to do good at the box office, given how big the budget was. They will lose money on it. Um, but hey, maybe I'll be wrong. And that's just my prediction. I don't think critic reviews drive. I don't think critic reviews drive people to go see Marvel movies. Like even last night, I I, I played darts on Tuesday nights, and uh, a female friend of mine came up to me and was like, "Oh yeah, she had just come from the movies. They brought their popcorn there." And I'm like, "Oh, what movie did you see?" And I'm like, oh, is there anything good out? And she's like, oh, there's this movie called The Eternals coming out. It's a Marvel movie. I'm probably going to see that. Like, that's who sees Marvel movies nowadays. Either hardcore fans of, like, the particular property or people that are just like, it's a Marvel movie. It must be good. And one bad one isn't enough to derail the entire MCU. I mean, I think Jordan Peele, um, you know, Get Out was pretty good. The following film was awful. Um and he's still getting work, you know? Um, you can see Eternals is so busy showing off what it can do and where it can go that it bypasses and overlooks what it really has to offer. There are real dilemmas, real battles of interest buried beneath the soft pedaled naturally lit, cozy surfaces of this movie. Eternals felt like a balloon that tried to hold it all together, but was filled to bursting it too much and not enough. The result was very ambitious, well-made, kind of flat, and unfortunately, forgettable. It flies high, grapples with huge themes and ideas, tries to keep check with humor and heart, but the whole thing feels overblown, overwrought, that you kind of walk out feeling out of the screen in a daze. This film is achingly earnest in tackling issues of diversity and representation, but falls as engrossing entertainment. Perfect encapsulation. Like, what they're really saying there is 
they 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 worked really hard to get all of the boxes checked and they forgot to make a good movie what seemed like a perfect marriage of filmmaker and studio, Oscar winner Chloe Zhao in Marvel Studios turns out to be one of, if not the biggest misfires since the MCU ever began. And and the reviews just keep rolling in. They, I mean, the hot the hot gods of Eternals will bore you to death with their feelings. That's from Rolling Stone. BBC Culture three stars for Chloe Zhao's Chloe Zhao's disappointing Eternals. It's like they it's like they completely forgot the MCU uh, recipe. Eternal is currently the lowest rated Marvel movie on Rotten Tomatoes. And before I get into this article, not a sponsor, just a thank you to everyone out there who's been backing me on Subscribestar, which is a free speech alternative to Patreon. It's linked in the description or through the join button down below. I'm currently on site at a movie set because of that to bring you guys better content. If you haven't yet um, and you are in a position to, please do consider making the day today the day you back on Subscribestar or join as a member on the channel. It helps support everything, including Sean, the video editor, Maggie, my wonderful assistant, um, Ben, my thumbnail guy, and allows me to come out here and get some better, I got some better mics some better equipment to do these interviews. So I appreciate all of you and I hope that you'll back today. The Eternals, a race of immortal beings with superhuman powers, have secretly lived on Earth for 10,000 years, reunite to battle the evil, evil deviants with a name that generic too. I, I just hate that name. At the current point in time, Eternals has a 66 rating on Rotten, on the Tomato Raider. It's actually 65 now. Most of the reviewers seem to think there's too much going on in the movie. I, again, I think they're a victim of so many characters that they want to give equal screen time to and develop that when you have that many new ones, it's got to be nearly impossible. Quote, Eternals feels like a balloon that tried to hold it all together but was filled to bursting. We read that one. Um... It will be interesting to see if an eternal sequel will ever will still happen, pending how the movie does at the box office. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, well, let's see um, what the budget was. You know, this is a two hundred million dollar budget. Okay, so the rule of thumb with Hollywood is if the budget was two hundred million, then it takes another two hundred million in marketing. Which, by the way, unlike Shang Chi. I've been seeing a lot of marketing for the Eternals. Um, so they have to make $400 million just to break even. And, and normally you need to like buffer and it's probably closer to 500 to break even. Um, if this movie doesn't make five, six, seven hundred million dollars, $700 you know, million, why would you make a sequel? Are people going to suddenly decide, hey, that first movie wasn't very good, but... You know, I want to run and, and go see a second Eternals. I mean, Black Widow, which I think was mediocre, okay, didn't even make $400 million at the box office. Now, to be fair, Black Widow released still in a tenuous time where a lot of people don't even want to go to the movie theaters. But somehow, and I don't know how, Fast 9 almost made a billion dollars. The thing about Black Widow, though, and the thing about Chloe Zhao's The Eternals is the China release, which sometimes is as much uh, as they get in domestic, or in some movies, it's actually more. Uh, I don't think Black Widow's been in China yet. Yeah, it doesn't look like um, back on July 9th, there's nothing. Um, you see Fast Sign, 600 million. Black Widow, you know, Black Widow passes 300 million in China. So Black Widow by China is preventing the Scarlet. So it doesn't look like it's going to get any any action in China either. Um, and that's like, I would think for Black Widow, that would have been another two to three hundred million. Um, this is a huge hit for Disney. And what I think they're probably going to do. Oh, and the reason they're not going to show the Eternals is because the director has spoken out against China, mm. which I 100 percent, 100 percent respect in her position. Um, I respect her to have the stones to come out and say, hey, you know, Chloe Zhao, if I remember right, um, uh, spoke out uh, pretty aggressively 
about China, which means that it's not this movie's not. Um, why? Yeah, they even censored her Oscar win in China. So you know, this is a director that isn't going to get China isn't going to bring the Eternals in. So it's going to have to make four hundred million dollars just to break even without China, which seems like an impossible task. This movie will lose money. And, you know, maybe it will drive more Disney Plus subscriptions. Maybe. Um, what do you think? Do you think this is a bigger picture of superhero film fatigue? Is it that people are just, you know, afraid of going to see movies? Or is this just a rare miss? I mean, if we look at, you know, the Eternals competition, right, for, you know, Rotten Tomatoes, for example, you know, in the MCU, it, to me, it's actually really, really shocking to see that it's actually rated worse. It's actually rated worse than Thor. I'm sorry, Incredible Hulk. That's insane to me. Black Widow had a 79, still lost money. The Eternals is at a 65. That's a huge drop. I thought it would just drop to like maybe, maybe high 60s. The next lowest film anywhere near that, um, Age of Ultron at 76. Um, and Thor Dark World at 66. Thor Dark World, which is widely considered one of the Marvel's worst movies, along with The Incredible Hulk at 67. Still better than the Eternals at 65 and rapidly dropping. I'll be interested to hear what you think in the comment section down below. And we'll talk to you again real soon.